Hello everyone. Uh, it's so nice to join you again for this chat that uh, we have that I call Office Time with me. Uh, I'm Michelle Ruiz and I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a founder of several companies and it's really great to see you all. As uh, many of you know, uh, if you've been following me, I do these uh, usually weekly. Uh, periodically things get really crazy in my businesses and I have to pause in which has been the case for the last uh, week or two uh, but I'm happy to to be here with you again and if you know much about me you know I focus a lot on scaling how do you grow your business and in particular because there are a lot of women entrepreneurs and there's certainly a lot of uh, minority uh, entrepreneurs who have very small small businesses so I'm constantly talking about scaling how do you scale your business? So, of course, this is applicable to any to everyone, but that's a passion area of mine. And so, uh, today, I want to talk to you about uh, a topic that's really important, uh, and it's really the decision about when you replicate or when you customize. And I see that Paul's here and Chris here. Hi, nice to see you both. Chris, my goodness, it's been forever. <laughs> some point we need to catch up um, so uh, scaling uh, when scaling and growing especially globally because I grow businesses with the intent for them to be global and my newest company is in fact going to be a global company our, our clients are very large multinationals uh, who have global footprints and government entities and things like that so what I want to talk to you about is when you scale, and in particular you're thinking with a global lens, although this may be applicable in a you know, local U.S. lens or North American lens, is how much do you customize and how much do you replicate? And often uh, it's a continuum. It's not the same strategy at every moment in time in your business's history. So, for example, I want to give you uh, a couple of large companies that I'm sure you know of uh, and talk to you about when they've made decisions to to uh, customize versus replicate 100%. So one of them would be, for example, McDonald's. Now, if you're a McDonald's fan, in particular of French fries, I am, uh, no matter where you go in the world, the French fries are the same. The French fries are cooked the same way, the, the, the same oil that the French fries are cooked in, is the same you pretty much know wherever you go in the world and you walk into McDonald's you are going to get the same french fry experience however you're going to see other things on the menu uh, depending on where you are frankly in the country because they experiment and roll out new things in different places of the country and also different places of the world so when I've been in the Middle East or I've been in Europe or I've been in Latin America it's always fascinating to me to walk into a McDonald's and see the customization that is relevant to the regional market. And uh, see, I see things that are clearly speaking to that culture, but interesting and different for me. Now, obviously we all know McDonald's is a very successful company. Now let's talk about Home Depot. So Home Depot, as you know, is a global company. And Home Depot's whole premise, especially as we know it here in the US, is about do it yourself. But when they expanded into China, they figured out that that message about doing yourself wasn't landing well for a couple of different reasons. First of all, people don't have a lot of space. So the idea of buying things in Home Depot with tools and supplies and all these kinds of things and bringing it home and building stuff on your own wasn't landing. It fell flat in many instances. The other thing to think about is labor is very inexpensive in Asia and in China as an example. So consequently, the idea of doing stuff for yourself didn't really resonate. So they had to change how they marketed, how they communicated, not necessarily what they sell, obviously things that are relevant to that market make sense, but you see they had to customize. Now I wanna give you some examples of uh, a hotel. So um, there's a hotel chain, uh, the Four Seasons as an example. So if you walk into a Four Seasons hotel, you know that you're going to get the same level of experience, or at least certainly that's your expectation. 
But when you go from a Four Seasons in one area versus a Four Seasons in the other area, and I'm not just talking regionally, but I'm also talking globally, you'll see the design, the decor, the feeling of the entire place is completely different. They're very cognizant of lo localization and relevancy in the, in the markets that they're in. And they're a very successful hotel chain. So all of this is simply to say, when you think about scaling your business, Often entrepreneurs think, oh, we need to do the exact same thing, the same business processes, the same methodologies, the same messaging, the same, uh, our employees need to speak the same, our employees need to wear the same uniform, if, if that's the nature of your business. Everything needs to be the same. But in fact, um, replication isn't always the key to success. So then the question becomes, how much do you customize and how much do you replicate? And it's never going to be the same balance as your company scales through different iterations of your business growth. So I talk a lot more about this in my mentoring program called Possibility Architect. Uh, and my program Possibility Architect was developed to really help entrepreneurs, in particular women and minority entrepreneurs, to think about scaling their businesses. As I've said before, this isn't, I, I own several companies. I'm now in my third company. It's a science-based technology company. We're scaling fast. It's investor-backed. Uh, we have large multinational global companies as clients. Uh, and a lot of what I teach is about my experience. So I hope that you will join me uh, and check it out. I developed the program because I often get asked about mentoring and I know the value of mentoring. Believe me, I've benefited from very important mentors in my life. But as I've had more companies and my companies have scaled, it's very hard for me to make that one-on-one -on -one commitment. So Possibility Architect was the way that I came up with so that I could offer my expertise and my guidance uh, under my mentoring program called Possibility Architect. So I hope you'll check it out, possibilityarchitect.com. There's a free masterclass there. Uh, and please, by all means, uh, post your questions. I'll answer them during this uh, weekly chat. And I hope you have a very successful week ahead. Take good care.